Welcome to the Oasis, my name is Mike. So, something I keep getting asked a lot lately in the comments on my videos is, what accessories do I use with my Quest 2? What head strap do I prefer? What headphones do I think are the best? What grips or cables would I recommend? Just so many questions that it'd be too difficult to answer them all individually, so I thought, why not make a video showing exactly what I use with my Quest 2 every day to make the experience in VR better, and more importantly, more comfortable. I'm not gonna be showing off haptic vests or haptic guns or any other crazy stuff. I'll probably show those weird and wonderful accessories in a future video. This is just what I would call my essential Quest 2 accessories. I've listed all the products shown in the video in the description below if you wanna check them out for yourself. So, I hope you enjoy the video and let's dive in. Okay, so first up, let's start with the most important accessories to make wearing the Quest 2 more comfortable. Now, I love the Quest 2, but when it first came out last year, one of the major criticisms I had was the default material head strap it shipped with. For me, it felt like my head was a watermelon and someone was wrapping elastic bands around it, and after a few minutes of use, it felt like my head was just gonna explode. My alternative at the time was to use the official Elite battery strap, and this was fine for a while, but like a lot of people out there, eventually one of the arms snapped, so I began looking for alternatives. And that's when I found the Bobo VR M2 head strap. If you follow the channel, you've seen me wearing this in all the Quest 2 videos I've posted over the last four months, and it's become my go-to head strap. It has super soft padding on the top, which sits on your forehead, and it also has padding at the back, which nicely cups the back of your head, making the Quest 2 more comfortable and secure to wear. You can easily tighten and loosen the strap using this big dial at the back. Bobo VR also do an extended battery variant of this strap called the M2 Pro. This has a neat hot swappable battery pack held in place with magnets. This will roughly add an additional three hours of playtime on top of the Quest 2's two to three hour playtime using the internal battery. Out of the two straps, personally, I prefer the original Bobo VR M2 as it's a bit lighter than the M2 Pro battery version and it also has more supportive padding at the back due to the curved design of the rear cushion. But let me know what you think of this head strap in the comments below. Moving on from the head strap, the second criticism I had with the Quest 2 was the default facial interface foam. I mean, it's okay, but after some time, I found it can get a little itchy and uncomfortable. To remedy this, I turned to one of my all-time favorite VR accessory makers, VR Cover. I've been using their products for the past five years since the original Rift launched, and I use their replacement facial interface kits on all my VR headsets. The original Quest 2 foam interface can easily be removed and the VR Cover one just slots in its place. They use this lovely, cool and soft pleather material padded with foam for the face pads, which makes wearing the Quest 2 for prolonged periods of time an absolute breeze. The kit comes with two face pads, a thick one and a thin one, so you can choose the one that works best for you. The pads themselves can easily be removed from the interface to be swapped out or cleaned, as they're just held in place with Velcro. The kit I have here is the limited edition Virtual Reality Oasis branded kit, which I of course love, but I'm totally biased here, so if you're looking for something more subtle, they also do a kit in black, along with a few other color options. On top of this, they also have some cheaper options like a cotton material wrap and a silicon wrap, which just goes over the original Quest 2's foam, but personally, I don't find these as comfortable as the full replacement kits. When you pair the VR cover replacement facial interface kit with the Bobo VR M2 head strap, you really have a killer comfort combo. I can play VR games using the Quest 2 for hours using this setup, no problem. Moving on from head straps and face pads onto lenses. Now, I actually have a mild prescription for glasses, which I tend to wear whilst driving or watching TV. I found when wearing my glasses in VR, it just helped to sharpen everything up a bit, but I found wearing them in headsets to be uncomfortable. Also, I once accidentally rubbed the glasses of my lenses against the glasses of my headset, causing scratches on both lenses, which turned out to be an expensive mistake. Since then, I've been a big fan of prescription lens inserts. These work by simply clipping in corrective lenses over the original headset's lenses. I have these inserts on three of my VR headsets now, and I wouldn't want to be without them. Obviously, not everyone wears glasses in VR, but this is a great alternative to wearing glasses or contact lenses whilst playing. These particular inserts are from a company called Widmo VR. They've always been a pleasure to deal with, and there's a link to their website in the description below. 
Now let's talk about audio. The Quest 2 actually has some pretty decent built-in speakers, which has outlets by your ears hidden away on the inside of the head strap's arms. They do a good job, but personally, I find for the most immersive experience, it's best to wear a pair of headphones especially for games that use spatial audio, as it's much easier to detect where the sound is coming from when using them. The headphones I've been using for the past couple of years with my VR headsets are the Arctis series headphones from SteelSeries. I originally used a black pair of Arctis 3 headphones, and I like them so much, I bought a second pair of white Arctis 7P headphones. When using them with the Quest 2, just like any headphones, you have to use them cabled, as the Quest 2's Bluetooth latency is far too high to use Bluetooth headphones. These SteelSeries headphones fit nicely over most head straps, including the Bobo VR M2 I showed you earlier, and they have a nice stretchy material band over the top, making them really comfortable to wear. The ear cups are made from a nice breathable material, so I don't find my ears getting hot whilst playing. Another awesome bonus of these SteelSeries headphones is that you can have two audio sources running through them at the same time. For example, you can connect them to the Quest 2 using a 3.5mm audio cable and also have audio coming from your PC wirelessly at the same time. This is particularly useful if you prefer to use something like Discord instead of in-game voice chat for multiplayer games or you just want to stream music from your PC whilst playing. The Arctis 7P come with a small USB-C dongle which sends the audio wirelessly at 2.4GHz to the headphones. This set is actually designed to be used with the PS5, but they also work great with a PC as long as it has a USB-C port. Now, if you don't have a USB-C port, but you still want to use the same mixing function with Bluetooth, so for example, you could listen to your Quest 2 audio wired and your phone streaming music wirelessly at the same time, the Arctis 9 headphones do the same thing, but use Bluetooth wireless audio streaming instead of using the USB-C dongle. The SteelSeries headphones are a little on the pricey side, but to have this dual audio feature is quite unique and is definitely worth it in my opinion. Now, a nice accessory that goes hand in hand with any pair of headphones, not just the Steel Series, is this short audio cable. As, like I mentioned before, you shouldn't use the Quest 2 with Bluetooth headphones due to the audio latency. This short cable just helps to keep the headphone cable out of the way. The last thing you want to do is get tangled up and accidentally rip your headset off whilst playing. This 30 centimeter or 12 inch 3.5 millimeter audio cable from StarTech is the perfect length to comfortably connect a pair of headphones to the Quest 2 without much slack. It has a right angle connector for the Quest 2 and a straight connector to go into your headphones. It's as cheap as chips and just makes everything a bit more neat and tidy. Moving on from the headset to the controllers. The Quest 2 actually has the best VR controllers of all the current VR headsets, in my opinion. They feel great in my hands, the button layout is nice, and the thumbsticks are spot on. But the one thing I don't like so much are the wrist straps. It's just another thing you have to do when getting into VR, and it's often overlooked. The problem is, these things are necessary to prevent you from launching your controllers across the room at your family, your pet, or worse, at your expensive TV or monitor. Thankfully, VR Cover have come in clutch again with another excellent accessory, and that's these awesome controller grips. With these, you can simply remove the original wrist straps, slide the touch controllers into the grips cups, and then the controllers will be fixed to your hands using an adjustable strap that runs across the back. Kind of makes the Oculus touch controllers feel a little bit like the index controllers in that you can completely let go of them, but they still remain secured in place. For me, they feel great and I can swing them around in confidence knowing they're securely attached to my hands. What I like to do is pair these grips with these halo protectors which are also from VR Cover. These fit snugly over the touch controller's inverted tracking ring and they have precise cutouts for the invisible IR tracking LEDs so they don't hinder the controller tracking in any way. While they probably won't prevent damage from a big throw or a massive drop, they will prevent damage from minor knocks and bumps. I've been using these in combination with the grips for around nine months now, and I absolutely love them. The last thing I want to mention when it comes to controllers is the batteries. Now, I don't know what wizardry Meta pulled off with these controllers, but they seem to last forever on a single AA battery, which is really impressive. Prior to even getting the Quest 2, I was using these Panasonic Eneloop Pro rechargeable batteries, and while they're more expensive in the beginning, over time you'll save yourself money instead of buying new batteries each time they need replacing. These come with a charger that can provide freshly charged batteries in just a few hours. Running multiple headsets and controllers, for me, it just makes more sense to use rechargeables over disposables. I really like them, so I thought it'd be worth mentioning.
Now let's talk about link cables. If you're new to the Quest 2, you might not be aware that you can actually connect the headset to a gaming PC to play PC VR games from Steam, which is an awesome feature. Half-Life Alex is still one of the best VR games to date, but it's only available on PC. I'll probably do a short video guide on how to play Steam VR content with the Quest 2 on the channel soon. Now, you can do this wirelessly, which I'll talk more about shortly, or you can use a USB-C cable. Oculus Stroke Meta provide their own 5 meter official link cable, which is very pricey at 80 US dollars or 80 British pounds, but it is the thinnest and most flexible link cable I've tried since its launch. Just recently, I've been testing a cheaper alternative from VR Cover, which is also 5 meters in length, but it's just a little chunkier. The VR Cover cable also comes with a nice Velcro loop to attach it to your head strap, which is a nice touch to keep the cable out of the way. Both of these cables work great, and I tend to use a cable over a wireless connection when I'm recording VR gameplay. There's plenty of other options available when it comes to link cables on Amazon if you want to find something a little bit cheaper. I'd just suggest reading the buyer reviews, as not all cables are made equal, and some work better than others. So when I'm not recording gameplay and I just want to play PC VR content from my gaming PC for fun, I tend to play wirelessly, and this is generally why I use the Quest 2 over any other PC VR headset. Now I'm not going to lie, this wireless setup is expensive as it costs the same price as the Quest 2 itself, however I've tested numerous Wi-Fi routers over the years and this is by far and away the best router setup I've ever tried with VR. This is the ASUS XT8 home mesh Wi-Fi system. It comes with a pair of Wi-Fi 6 routers, one is connected to your original router from your internet service provider, and the second would be ideally located next to your gaming PC and VR play space. The range on these routers is insane, meaning that I can use Oculus Air Link or Virtual Desktop to play PC VR games wirelessly from anywhere in the house. I appreciate they're expensive, but if you're looking for a good home mesh Wi-Fi network, these are the best you can buy right now, and they're also kind of future-proof for future Wi-Fi 6 enabled VR headsets. This final accessory is probably one of the most underrated accessories for the Quest 2, but I use it every day and it's definitely essential in my opinion, and that's the proxy mat. This is a sturdy foam mat designed specifically for VR users. The mat is textured and has raised buttons in the middle and on the front edge. And this means that when you're in VR, you can feel the texture underneath your feet so you know that you're centered and facing forwards. For me, as a content creator who regularly records VR gameplay, this is invaluable, as I always know I'm centered and facing the camera if I'm on the mat. This also acts as an additional safety device as I often get so immersed in the game I'm playing that I forget about my surroundings. With the mat in the center of my play space, I know with confidence while I'm on the mat, I can punch out in all directions and I won't hit anything. You can easily replicate this with a small piece of carpet or something similar to feel the texture underneath your feet, but these mats are super hard wearing and it's an essential bit of kit in my opinion. So there we have it. They're my essential Quest 2 accessories. Let me know what are your essential Quest 2 accessories in the comments down below because we're all different and we all like different things so I'd be interested to know what are your favorite accessories. Also, if you have any questions about any of the products that I've mentioned in this video, drop them in the comments down below and I'll try and answer as many questions as I can. If you've made it this far into the video, I wanna say thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it and I hope you're all keeping safe and well. Don't forget to leave a like on the video if you found it useful. Make sure you're subscribed for all my future VR content. And as always, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.